Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success, an online free educational institute. So today we will be talking about amendment of Indian constitution that is article 368 of Indian constitution and this video would be helpful for WBCS experience as well as for other SPSC examinations. SPSC stands for State Public Service Commission and not only that, that would also help you in preparing central government equipment examination. So, we have started a channel that would help you in guiding WBCS aspirants. So, we request you to share our video. If it is helpful, then you kindly share and let the peop let other people get benefits of it. So, this video is presented by me, Shirshendu Mitra, research scholar of Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So, if you have any queries, you can write me to this email IDs and I will be happy to reply to your emails. And if you have any other queries, you can write your questions and queries to the comment box and we will be helping you out. Anybody can uh, answer of that comments and if not, I would obviously answer. So, that is the article 368. Let us have a look at article 368. So, this is the article 368, it comes under part 20 of Indian constitution. So, before going into details of article 368, we should know how many parts are there. As I have mentioned, it comes under part 20. So, let us have a look at the parts of Indian constitution. So, we have 22 parts as you can see here. So, this uh, I have copied from Wikipedia, so I should give the reference of Wikipedia. You can go to Wikipedia and you can have this from Wikipedia. Or else you can go through any constitution book, you would have it. Okay, so part 1 talks about union and territory, that means the land of India. And then part 2 uh, deals with uh, citizenship and part 3 about the fundamental rights. Then comes part 4 that talks about directive principle of state policy commonly known as DPSP. Few more things you should know about DPSP. Those There are few articles that come under DPSP but those articles actually they act as guidelines of frame, guidelines to frame act or laws. When uh, the legislatures enact any act or any law passes any bill then it is mentioned that you should follow this DPSP in order to make or frame your laws and those articles cannot be challenged in any court of law you should know these things then comes a part 4a that deals with the fundamental duties and you should if you have any query that why this is part 4a why not part 5 so I'll tell you this part came afterwards that's why uh, by some amendment that's why it is part 4a uh, now uh, article uh, not article uh, the part 5 deals with union part 6 deals with the states part 7 deals with the now it is repealed but it dealt with states in part b of the first schedule there are eight shed there are schedules of indian constitution so that also i will mention later on then come part 8 of Indian constitution that deals with the union territories, part 9 deals with the panchayats, part 9a with the municipalities, part 9b with the cooperative societies, 10 and 11, 10 deals with schedule and schedule tribe areas, 11 deals with the relation between union and states, this is a very important part, I will make a separate video of it that basically tell you what are the authorities of union, what are the authorities of states who would make law on which topic there are few list that is concurrent list state list and union list union, union list so the central government has authority to make law that comes under union list state government has authority to make laws that comes under state list and both the state government and central government come together and form law that come under your concurrent list so, we will be talking about this in detail in some separate video, keep following us. Part 12 talks about finance, property and contracts, but 13 talks about the trade and commerce within the territory of India. Then part 14 for 
services and the union and the state this is another important part that deals with the civil services and other government services and uh, we'll be making another video on part uh, part this part, part 14 and then comes part 14a that talks about the tribunals uh, part 15 deals with the elections part 16 special provisions relating to certain classes then the part 17 that deals with the languages part 18 deals with this emergency provision that is another important part and again we'll be making a video on emergency provisions then part 19 deals with miscellaneous things part 20 which we are talking about now that is the amendment of the constitution then part 21 temporary translational and special provisions that is also important then the part 22 that talks about short title date of commencement authoritative text in Hindi and it has been repealed. I am sorry, uh, that talks about the repeals, it has not been repealed. Okay, so now I am going to article 368 of the constitution that is under 20. Now, by the time now we know. Okay, so basically this 368 article empowers the parliament to amend constitution so that is the basic thing uh, written in bold that is it empowers the parliament to amend constitution how it empowers it empowers through addition variation or repeal of any provision according to the procedure laid down therein that means you cannot do anything as per the procedure if rules allow you then only you can make addition variation or repeat which is different from the procedure for ordinary legislation okay now article 368 has been amended two times now so from this information you should you should have a have an idea that article 368 also it also it also can be amended okay so it uh, two times it, it was done that is 24th amendment that came in the year 1971 42nd amendment came in the year 1976 okay so now you should know uh, we should talk about 24th amendment 24th amendment two new clauses have been added by this amendment and that is clause 1 and clause 3 of article 368 and one more article one more thing has been added and that comes in article 13 which reads nothing in this article shall apply to amendment of this constitution made under article 368 that means article 13 cannot be amended now if anybody asks me that what is there in article 13 of indian constitution so article 13 it says laws inconsistent with or in derogation of the fundamental rights that means there are three clause of article 13 so let us have a look at article 13 also just type article 13 of indian constitution go there so this is the article so laws inconsistent with or in derogation of the fundamental rights so all laws in force in the territory of India immediately before the commencement of this constitution in so far as they are inconsistent with the provisions of this part shall to the extent of such inconsistency be void. So let me clear this, this thing. It is saying that if you, you have now you have a constitution and before framing the constitution before coming into act of this constitution you had several laws that that was made by british in british government or some other government authorities so those laws would be enforced till now but 
the laws which are violating this constitution would not be allowed in India. So those laws would be void. So this article we cannot amend. Okay. Now coming to the provisions of Article 42nd, I mean uh, Amendment 42nd of Indian Constitution, uh, which was made to amend th Article 368, but later on it was repealed uh, because of a case that happened in the year 1980, and the case was Minerva Mills versus Union of India. So we'll be talking about it some other day. So now, the power of parliament to amend the constitution and procedure therefore. So, first clause, it says, so first clause has been added by article, first and the third clause has been have been added by article, uh, I mean uh, the amendment 24 that was done in the year 1971. So it says, notwithstanding anything, in this constitution, parliament may, may, parliament may, in exercise of its constituent power, amend by way of addition, variation or repeal any provision of this constitution in accordance with the procedure laid down in this article. It means that you can amend the constitution by addition, variation or repeal, but you have to follow the clauses of this article, that is article 368. Then an amendment of this constitution may be initiated only by introduction of a bill. This uh, clause 2 talks about how to uh, amendment take place. So if you want to amend an article of constitution, then you should start with introduction of a bill. It says this only. An amendment of this constitution may be initiated only by the introduction of a bill for the for the purpose in either house of parliament that is important so you have to introduce a bill and that bill can be introduced in either house of the parliament and when the bill is passed in the each house by a majority of the total membership of the house and by a majority not less than two thirds of the members of the house present and voting so there are three majorities, one simple majority, special majority and absolute majority. We will be talking about the majority to pass a bill in parliament in a separate video. But you, sh you should know for passing a constitution amendment bill, you have to, m you have to maintain this. So less than two thirds of the members of the house present and voting. It shall be presented to president who shall give his assent to the bill and thereupon the constitution uh, shall stand amended in accordance with the terms of the bill. What does it mean? So you have introduced a bill, that bill has been passed by two houses of parliament and then it went to president, president has signed, then we should say that constitution has been amended. And whatever written in that bill that would come to the constitution, that is the important part, whatever are there in the bill now it would come to the constitution as addition, deletion or repeal, whatever. Now there are few more things. Pro it is saying that provided that if amendment seeks to make any changes, so there are few articles and parts, if you want to change them, then you have some additional procedure. So, for article, now what is that additional procedure that we will tell first then to amend this many articles you have to pass that bill by 50% of the state legislatures. The amendment shall also require to be ratified by the legislature of not less than one half of the states by resolution to that effect passed by the by those legislature before the bill making provisions for such amendment is presented to the president for assent that what does it mean it means you have introduced a bill in inner house of the parliament both the house passed that bill but then the bill cannot go to the president after passing from the both house of the both houses of the parliament it should go to the state legislatures 
and once 50 per, more than 50 percent of the state legislatures give passes the bill give the ratification then it goes to the president and if president give his assent then it becomes an act now what are those articles which requires the ratification by the states those are article 54 that deals with the election of president of india comes under part 5 chapter 1 so those are those, those things mentioned in highlighted in green those are not there in the actual article if you see the constitution but for your purpose for your convenience i have highlighted i have given this additional things so article 54 that talks about the election of president so that if you want to amend this article you have to have ratification of the 50 percent of the states after passing a bill from both the houses of parliament Similarly, Article 55 that deals with the manner of election of the President, Article 73 deals with the extent of executive power of the Union, Article 162, extent of the executive power of the state that comes under Part 6, Chapter 2 or Article 241 deals with the High Courts of for the Union Territory comes under Part, uh, part 8. Again, if you want to change something in Chapter 4 of Part 5, or chapter 5 of part 6 chapter 4 or part 5 that deals with the union judiciary chapter 5 of the part 6 that deals with the high courts in the states or chapter 1 of part 11 that deals with the legislative relation between union and states so for all these cases you need the ratification of more than 50 percent of the states again if you want to make changes in any of the lists in the seventh schedule the representation of the state in the parliament, the provision of this article, this require this ratification of 50% of the states. Again, I have already told 24th amendment that clause has been added. It says nothing in the article 13 shall apply to any amendment made under this article. One more thing, by 42nd amendment, those provisions were included, but that those both the provisions have been repealed so i am not going into details just for your sake you that my there might be a question which are the clauses have been repealed and that comes under for 42nd amendment those are the uh, the clauses are clause 4 and clause 5 of article 368 okay for amending a constitution sometimes a special ma simple majority is needed as in a creation of new state that can be made very easily so more than 50 percent uh, vote uh, is required that is simple majority and for some other cases special majority would be required that is to, to third member of the uh, house present and voting or in the third case i have told special majority plus ratification of states so those are the things about the indian constitution amendment so recently I will talk about the last constitution amendment bill and that is 122 constitutional amendment bill regarding your goods and services tax. So that has been passed and now it is an act. I will show you the constitution amendment act related to GST. Uh, just wait, it is being opened. Yeah, so I have taken it from the Gazette of India, the official site where all the acts and bills are published. So this is the document of Ministry of Law and Justice came on 8th September 2016. The Constitution Amendment 101st Amendment. One thing I told you that was 122, 122nd Amendment Bill. But when it amended, it became 101st Act. Why? Because there are few more bills, those have not been passed by the House. So now still those are, those are a bill. But this bill has passed, that's why it is 101 Constitutional Amendment Act. So this uh, by this amendment we have uh, done some changes in many of the articles so if i show you a few of them it says this act may be called constitution 101st amendment act 2016 it shall come into force uh, on those are those are the 
those are not the changes okay there are the change insertion of new article 246a so by this amendment we are putting another article and naming it 246a so i'll be talking about details later special provision with respect to goods and services tax so this article we have included few more amendments like in article 248 the constitution in clause 1 for the word parliament the words <coughs> figures and letters subject to article 246a comma parliament shall be substituted so uh, instead of parliament we will sell this so in detail i will be talking in some other video i'll make a video on gst bill there i'll be talking about the entire amendment of 101 amendment so if you have uh, interest i'll put this link in uh, the comment section you can download it and you can have a look but otherwise you can wait i'll make another video where you will be knowing regarding this article not article amendment so thank you for watching Please subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more videos on WBCS and let us have a chat section that means you write something in our comment box and we will be uh, answering your questions and like that we can prepare and that would be helpful because uh, then uh, before the examination we can stream online also people would come and they would, uh, we would have a chat. So that would be an online forum for discussing and mainly for WBCS.